Previously on Foresight Fantasy Hour. After a previous job went south, the two were greeted by a stout dwarven man named Maddox Stonecutter. The Stonecutter brothers thanked Emmy and Ander for helping them and explained their plan for the forge. They planned on making the forge into a business, having adventurers bring their gear to them so that they could enchant it with other magical artifacts. There are three brothers that run this business. There is Maddox Stonecutter, who is the middle brother, kind of runs the whole show. He's just kind of like the brains of the bunch. The oldest brother is named Big Brutus, and out of the three of them, he is the one who handles um, being a blacksmith. Uh, so he handles the building of all he's of the He's got the physical weapons. aspects, so. Yes. Gotcha. So then the smallest and youngest brother is Gordy. He is quiet. Um, not much is known about him other than he helps out the other brothers. But we're investigating something that happened uh, about a week ago. Um, something that uh, we believe involves some sort of things called well forges. And apparently this business kind of deals with that, but we really couldn't get anything out of them. But what's unfortunate is it's still active. And the thing to make the final well forge happen is to activate all of them. Now, my proposal to you, uh, we gotta destroy them. Um, that's why you have actually so much money is because you have 10% of the, the monthly revenue that comes from weapons and gear. Yeah, I'm fixing to kill that little <laughs> that, that sugar now. daddy. <laughs> we need to figure out what our angle is going to be when we get in there because it seems like these three guys have made this their livelihood. Emmy and Jack are ever closer to their first well forge, but they'll have to get through a very talkative and wealthy dwarf. And convincing him to destroy his livelihood to save the world, that won't be an easy task. On the factory floor of the um, Stonecutter's weapons and gear. Okay. Um, to clear to clear up something that we were talking about off camera, um, you are technically not in the Well Forge right now. Oh. Um, you are in uh, the cave that leads to the Well Forge, and uh, Matic will soon explain more about this. But Emmy, yeah, this as you look around this entire place, it is so drastically different than anything you ever saw. Uh, when earlier, you, when I was here earlier, when you went through the cave, because you went through this huge cave mm -hmm. um, that housed the well forge in it. But I never actually went into the well. Forge. No, you've never seen it yourself. Okay. Right. But this right. part that we're in now I, isn't the well forge. It's the part that you've been in. So. Yeah. But even still, yes, I was in it, but they have done some very big upgrades. Yeah. <laughs> it's very different. Yes. Very different. So um, the three of you, um, I'm including Roderick, um, oh, okay. are standing there with... Uh, Gordy, and um, in front of you is Maddox Stonecutter and this gnome in a suit next to him. As Maddox gets closer to you guys, he says, Oh, Emmy Hilltopper. Oh, it's so, it's so good to see you, darling. How are you? How have you been? Hey, how you doing? Good, good. I and he he just grabs and shakes her hand. Okay, and he's just like so so wonderful to see one of my fa my favorite halfling friends. Now now who who's your friend right here next to you? Um, you've got a very interesting garb about you. Very very nice. Very um, intricate. I love it. Very nice. Yeah, speaks a lot about my character. Hey, I'm Jack Pilgrim, and. You know, I I think we're gonna have to get a bit upfront about my business. I've been very upfront all day. Um, <laughs> we got some bad news for you. Yeah, doesn't matter. Bad news is something I, I don't like to hear. Um, here, here, uh, I, I mean, I want you to meet someone here, right here. Mm -hmm. Um, is one of the new associates coming into weapons and gear. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself, my good sir. And so this uh, gnome kind of speaks up, and he goes. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Manic. Uh, my name's uh, Reddick Rick Richardson. Uh, it's uh, good to meet the two of you. I am a uh, designer. I am an inventor. I'm a tinkerer. You know, I'm a rock gnome. That's what I do. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. So it's uh, good to meet the two of you. Uh, Emmy, you said Emmy and yeah. uh, you said, uh, Jack Pilgrim? That's right. All right. Uh, neat name. I like it. So you said you have bad news or something? That's a uh, yeah. You yeah. might need really to great. hear this too. It's got a lot to do with the business, the business. really. Oh well, I mean that's actually what me and Matic were talking about. We were um, I'm probably gonna start 
being one of their new business associates. I, I, I think I'm familiar. Emmy Hilltopper, mm-hmm. and he kind of looks at Maddox. It's like, she she owns part of the share in the company, and then Maddox kind of just nods and goes, "Yes, yes, that's that's right." Uh, her and uh, one of her, one of her oh, shoot, I just hit my mic. <laughs> yes, her and um, the uh, Mister uh, Ender Ender Alexander Stormborn. They own share in the company. They they both have ten percent. Yes, and because of that, um, that's why I came to see see you because we wanted to give you a heads up. There's been some stuff that's been going on that I think you really need to know about. Yeah, I'm not sure if your other brother here lets you know about you know these officers that were trying to investigate you guys just they're, they're now. They're right outside. Yeah. Oh yes, we saw them. We, they they're just some petty, yeah, you know, just cops trying to. See if we're doing anything shady. Of course, we're not. No, we're actually, right. it's, no, worse of course, it's it's a little bit worse than that, though. Yeah. There's a situation that's been several, several situations that negative developments with them that are Link. all leading these officers of the law to the to forge. This forge, yes. Well, I mean, what what could have possibly gone wrong? I mean, we haven't done anything. Me and my brothers have just been here. Exactly. Uh, Reddick's been here as well. Yeah, of course, you guys haven't done anything wrong. No, it's the items that have come out of this forge that... Um, that they think have come out of this forge. Yeah, and they're going to be back. Right. Is the, is the problem. Yeah, they, they will be back with a warrant because <laughs> the situations that have occurred was huge. do warrant an investigation. And... Links. I mean, all the public really has to go on right now is this publicly well-known business for putting out items from Wellforges. So, as you say all of this, uh, Reddick's kind of standing there, and he, he looks kind of a little nervous. He goes, uh, yeah, hey there, uh, uh Maddox, um, how about the, 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 the three, how about, you, you just kind of talk with, uh, your, your friends here and go into the office, um, how about, uh, me and, uh, Gordian, when he's saying that, um, there's a power surge. And things kind of go, and he looks and he goes, oh, oh, well, that's actually something we can do. And Gordy goes like, oh, yeah, it's just been happening all day today. Um, yeah, we, we've been having an issue with some of the the the, the power supply in here. Uh, yeah, yeah, Reddit can help me out with that. And the two of them start walking. He goes, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll just be in the engine room, uh, just making sure things are OK. And then um, they they walk off into um across the room of where you are across because to the far left there is a room where these automatons are coming out of um across from you there is two doors one is um shut like a huge metal door that is, that is automatically shut and then another one that is open that leads into uh, a hallway and so that's where they're going and that it goes oh yes yes i think that's a that's a wonderful wonderful idea uh yeah two of you come come here Just come step into my office also, um, just because you're a wonderful guest here um, and business partners, uh, he grabs one of the, uh, he grabs <clears throat> this little funnel that has a cord to it and he starts speaking into it and he's like, uh, hey, uh, BB, if you could come in here and uh, get get something for um, our, our guests that we've had in today, I don't know if you're sleeping on the job again, but um, <laughs> yikes! <laughs> I need you to to go into storage and get uh, something from A D cleric and uh, B E rogue. Uh, I, I assume you're you're of the roguish type, aren't you? Sure, yeah. Okay, actually, yeah. Um, okay, if you could just get those for me, that would be great. And if you could just get off your lazy ass, that would be awesome. <laughs> and he uh, hangs it back up, and he steps into the office. I, I just whispered to Emmy, was he always this kind of uppity? Yeah. All right. So as you guys walk into this office, um, it is um, a room that it has completely glass walls. So um, it is built into the, the factory floor layout. And there is a small desk in the back um, with a chair that's like a really fancy chair. It's cool. We <laughs> Maddox it. And... Um, there is some filing cabinets to the far left side of the room, and then closest to the door, there is a long table with a bunch of different papers and um, like what looks like order forms. Mm-hmm. And so the two of you come in, and he closes the door, and uh, he sits down in his chair, and he said, "Okay, so run run all, all this by me again of what is uh, 
happening that may or may not affiliate with my business. Maybe we should tell him about the um the situation. The inc- yeah, the incident with the big uh, the dong yeah, thing. Yeah, the community center. Yeah, gotcha. community center. So we let him know about what went down at the uh, barbarians ball. Okay. Um, without letting him know that we were there, mm-hmm. we're just kind of reporting, reporting on the situation okay. and letting him know that it's become known to the public that. Items sold at this barbarian's ball were well forged created items. We're not trying to say that he did it. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to say that these items were well forged created and they could be, you know, connected by the public to his business here at this well forge. Um, and so, when you explain all that, he just kind of sits and listens for a little bit and he goes, Well, you know, honestly. I don't really have anything to be worried about. You know, our our weapons and gear don't really affiliate and make anything of that magnitude. So uh, we we've got receipts, we've got papers, we've got orders. Um, I mean, Emmy here has some of uh the items that were crafted here, which is all armor and weapons. So you know, something of this magnitude, I don't think, can really be even be tracked back to us. So sure. I'd like what? to roll for per- persuasion. persuasion. Should we both do it? I was just going to say, I think we need to persuade this guy to yeah. see things more our way. Right, because the other thing is we didn't tell him about the other incident a couple months ago involving the burned down building. Mm. Just public sentiment going one way that probably won't go good and So you didn't business. tell him about that one? No, no. not okay. that one. Not yet. So so maybe, maybe with the persuasion check, we should... Then continue to enlighten him as to why he needs to be a little more concerned. Because actually, sure. right yeah. now he doesn't care. Yeah. Okay. So I'll roll. Because well. our plan actually depends on. That's not good. You do a roll. I hope so. Oh lord. Oh okay. Good. Oh. So my my persuasion is plus two. Uh, I got a seven. Okay. <laughs> I got a seven. I got great rolls last episode, so a, this is... I have 11. Right. Okay. 11. So as much as you're saying, you're really not getting through Evidently to Matic. Because um, I'm like, he's not understanding me. It's a, and as severity. you guys try to kind of like dig in a little bit more, he slowly starts not paying too much attention. And while you guys are actually talking, um, there's another power surge. Hmm. Um, but it just flickers. But um, is that... It? Could we not ask him? So what is this really about? Oh, the power surge. Yeah. yeah. What um, is that really about? Oh, I'd love to tell you. It's it's so it's so wonderful. Um, okay, so as you can see, you can see the factory layout. I got a good view of it right here in my office. I, I, it's just so I'm so impressed with my brothers have done a good work, but but me, I've done this awesome awesome job of designing all of this. Oh. You see, you see that 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 shut doorway in the back over there. Mm-hmm. That's actually leading to the well forge. We are, we we are drawing the power from from this forge into the facility itself. It is drawing um, the the energy from the the magic energy that comes from it, along with the energy that is radiating off of the, the just the natural presence. That's what's keeping these lights on. That's what energizes our engine room. See each of the each of the rooms in this building, um, and he shows you a map of the the building. He gives us a full blueprint. Sure, oh, he, he just lays it out on his desk. Mm-hmm. Good to have one. Good to yeah. have in the head. Yeah. yeah, Roger, you getting this? Uh huh. Oh, dope. Here's an actual map that we're looking at. Yeah, okay. I, I have I have made an actual map. All right, um, so we're here. Yes. So uh, there is a large factory floor, um, and then there are. Uh, four hallways that lead into different rooms um and as matic explains every entrance into a room is guarded by uh this metal door made out of vorpal metal you guys familiar with vorpal weapons vorpal metal i think i got a vorpal weapon on me right now oh let me see let me see let me see so um 
I, I, I reluctantly show him his, the recall blade. I just got too excited. And, he and he to examines it. it, and he goes, well, I don't believe this is a Vorpal sword, but it's, it's very well crafted. I, I like the magical energy coming off of it. It's very, very nice, very slick, very light. It's very good. Yes. Um, you'll be excited when, um, when Big Brutus comes in for, for what I got in store for you, and he hands it back to you. But as he's talking, I'm rubbing my, my temples going, oh, my God, this is not at all what I had in mind. I thought this was going to go very differently. Just, just roll oh with it. Just roll and with it. Just, um, just roll with it. But, but regardless, he, he says that these doors are made out of horrible metal. Um, and um, he explains that um, if, there's ever a, if there's ever a situation where these doors are shut or closed, um, we have these little... Um, we have a, a security panel and a, these codes to put in, and these doors will open um, based off of uh, codes that each of my brothers have. Um, again, all of this designed and built by me using the the natural energy of the Wellforge. And when he says that again, uh, you you have another power surge. Hmm. And he goes, "What's been interesting? What's been worthwhile is um, the more stuff we start using, the more I realize this Wellforge is getting more powerful. Whether it was." Um, due to us or is it just divine intervention um and we've been able to do more work with um this and create more weapons and as he says that um he sees brutus coming in he goes "Ooh, weapons like these and so uh brutus comes in new loot new loot new loot yeah he's this really and big like, oh, um no, i've just lost jack <laughs> Here we he's go. this really big uh buff dwarf and he's carrying two boxes and he hands the one that says Cleric AD to Emmy, and he hands the one that says uh, Rogue BE to you. Um, and uh, Brutus just kind of looks at Emmy and goes, <clears throat> Emmy, hi. Hi. Um, and then uh, Maddox says, yes, thank you, thank you, Brutus, that'll be all, that'll be all. And then uh, he leaves. Thank Rude. you, Brutus. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I was like, wow. Um, do you guys open the boxes? Okay. Yes. Sure. Yes. When you open the boxes, um, Emmy, do you the box has um two brass knuckles in them. I realize uh, there is something I need to do when describing these that I should have done a while ago. I apologize. One of the weapons I got an idea from uh, something I saw on Tumblr, and I, I just want to credit the person who I saw it. Oh, okay. Got you. Because it's hysterical. <laughs> I don't know who this person is. I saw it on Tumblr. I'm going to I'm gonna shout out to Bailey, who is on Twitter, at S-S-K-Y-E-A-H. S-S-K... Sick, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Emmy, the, the brass knuckles, uh -huh. as... um. Matic explains are called thoughts and prayers. Huh. Um, I won't do it. I'll just explain this so I can <laughs> have this go a little bit faster. Um, these are uh, two. These are weapons that you can carry in both your hands, um, and they each do one d four um, uh, damage. And then um, we can add other modifiers to that. Whether you, and they're um, they're light weapons and they're finesse, so you can use dexterity or you can use strength when using them. Um, thoughts, so they're just they're just bludgeoning weapons. But thoughts does psychic damage and prayers does radiant damage. So they do um, different types of damage uh, based While on the while wearing stuff. them. Yeah, yeah, uh, cool. which is really cool. <laughs> that's really uh, cool. <laughs> that's that's like just something I think is really neat. Thoughts, prayers, <laughs> and you can attack. In one action, you can attack with both of them. Oh, so. give, give them the double types of damage. Yeah. That's really cool. Because they are both light. So you can carry both um, weapons and fight with both of them. Dope. Um, Jack, your your item that is in front of you is a robe of useful items. So you find this big old robe that currently has two patches on it. Um and that there are um, 19 packages in a smaller box where you can put anything that you would like. This actually comes from D&D, so I will read what um, the robe of useful items does. Is this just like a huge combat jacket with a ton of pockets? Uh, pretty much. Uh, cool. 
And as you look at the robe of useful items for you, you realize that uh, Matic is wearing one as well. Oh, I, I uh, upon noticing that, I heavily inspect it, <laughs> just just so that I I I know. You know, in so, case maybe I pickpocket Matic. <laughs> so this robe has cloth patches of very uh, various shapes and colors um, covering it. Um, so the the patches are different colors. Um, while wearing the robe, you can use an action to detach one of the patches, um, causing it to become oh, causing it to become the object or creature it represents. I did not know that. Oh. Um, so you, you physically uh, take off the patch. Oh, and then it turns into the. That's cool. So if I if I if I had like a potion like patch. I take that and it turns into a potion. Yeah. Ooh. Um, oh, no. Once the last patch is removed, um, it becomes an ordinary garment. Ah. Uh, so, oh, functional you know? fashion that so, turns into fashion. Yeah. Real good. Yeah. Super into it. Um. So the uh, Matic explains um that the two patches that are currently on the robe for you. Um, one is a, uh, a dragon tooth dagger and the other is, um, a quiver of 20 arrows. Ooh, cool. And then the 19 other patches you can create with however you want. Oh, cool. So I, that's what I'm going to allow. I don't know if you can actually do that, but it's my game. Okay, so. cool. All right. <laughs> so, so you're saying that I can like turn stuff into patches to add to this rope yes okay. so that's how cool. you would carry them around i guess yes yeah cool because then if it's a patch then you don't have to carry like something that would be good too yeah although this isn't a bethesda skyrim game with like carrying i'm not weight. i'm not treating yeah. it like that but some people would right yeah no i mean it'd just be cool like if i needed on hand to have like items to just rip off like real quick mm -hmm. as like i guess like a like an like an action like a free action right in battle or something i think oh. it just said an action yeah, yeah. um yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it just gives you more options to do stuff okay. um and then emmy is just a a better uh, weapon for you to fight with sure um so and i shows you the two of those and he goes um now as a man who loves business um these are my gifts to you but um you know in in return I, we can talk about a price of negotiating on you uh, keeping these items um, but we can have it at a very, very discounted price. Hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. And, and, and as much as I love um, uh, our our new, you know, equipment and you know, toys. I'm super into this robe. It looks very good on me. Uh, yeah, yes, evidently. They're, they're wonderful. I have one of myself. I I absolutely love this robe. It's one of our one of our finest newest collections. Yeah, actually I noticed you got some different patches than I do. What are your patches? Oh, uh I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. Oh. Okay. Okay. He's he's just full of a lot, lot, lot he's lots just, of surprises. Yeah, he's just full can of surprises. I, can I can I not persuade him to let me know what he's got on hand? No. Uh I can try maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Uh roll uh two D ten. Two D ten. Uh, Seven? 70. Yeah, it's 70. Okay, so 70. it would be uh, 73. Okay. So, um, well, right. That's that's the number that you got because you, cause you go to the, the second because it's 70 and then it's three. That's how I read them. Okay. Regardless, um, <laughs> Matic tells you, oh, yes, uh, well, this patch um, it is actually a 12 foot, wrong, foot long rowboat. You never know. You never know when you, you're going to need a boat for yourself. Uh, these are useful items for me. Wow! Wow! It's really creative. That's actually, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Wow. You can carry stuff without carrying stuff. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And, and the whole time I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is all very fun and intriguing, but we do have business. Yeah. Yeah. And and he kind of sees a little bit of worry on your face, and he goes, you know, I see that you're worried. I'm very flattered that you're you're concerned about me, but we really have nothing to fear. Um, th this well forge is highly well protected. Nothing could go wrong. Uh, we used to have an issue of a little uh, floating skeleton spirit. Uh, I was going but... to ask you about that. Where is he? Oh, well, well, um, it, it was he was getting a little bit in the way of our business, um, and he was just kind of being a little bit of a nuisance. So uh, we we hired someone to to expose and get rid of uh, this nuisance. Oh, he was the one that was protecting. 
protecting the forge. Well, he didn't need to protect it anymore because we're here. We, we're not doing anything wrong. We're just creating a business. And how do you explain the power outages then? Yeah. If if the forge is... Um, is is really running this well. And increasing in power, then what is causing it to... Cut in and out? I don't know. Um... Isn't that concerning? Yeah. No, no, of course not. Not to me. Not to of me. Not. Um, oh dear, right. this is so bad. But now, now in the in the in the topic of buying your gifts that I've given you, uh, mm. we'll just say it's a fair price for the two of them. Uh, seventy five gold pieces would it be fine. Well, uh, as I recall, um, I was supposed to have gotten some um, pay, um. Some payment. Well, right? like royalties. You yeah. know, I, I was supposed to have received some. Oh yes, some of my I, I'm sorry. Which... That is that is Gordy. He totally dropped the ball on that. Yeah. He's in charge of all yeah. of that. So you know what? Let's we'll, call it even. We'll say bygones be bygones. Sure, so sure. Right. Cool. Given the fact that I have no idea how much um, I mean, I'm supposed to actually collect. However, yeah. Why don't we just do that? I don't want anything more from him. Um, mm. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and call it even, and we'll just keep these even, nice little even. Stevens. Even. I, I love it. That even. Sounds- Marek, yes. It sounds uh, absolutely wonderful. For the public record, I have 70 gold pieces, so I wouldn't have been able to buy this <laughs> precious <know>. gift. So, <laughs> right. you know what? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're welcome. Gotcha. So we're going to just go ahead and let let, let that you know be be that. Um, but since I am tied to, and in its knowledge that I am a partner, in a sense, of this here forge, and given that you just really are not grasping the severity of that when they keep investigating um these events that you know are happening um it's it just i just thought it would be prudent for a while to maybe just um be on the lowdown and then maybe come back later and yeah. when you say all of that <laughs> the power goes out again for good this time Uh, hey everybody, uh, Scotty here, um, and I Happy New Year to you all! We did it! We survived 2017, and we're finally in 2018. I mean, it's been nuts, right? I can't believe it's been a year since our last episode. Ooh, got the dad joke going in. Yeah, you know that joke never gets old. Never does. We'll always tell it. It's my favorite joke. Anyway, thanks for watching the show, and as always, if you like what we're doing, you can help support us by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. You can also uh, like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at FFH Podcast. Then you can also subscribe to us on YouTube on the channel Scotty Milad, which is Scotty M-I-L-A-D. Sp- Speaking of YouTube, an update video should be going up uh, talking about our plans for 2018. Um, In the video, I'm going to go over some basic goals we're setting uh, for ourselves throughout the year and sort of um, what types of videos we plan on doing and like new stuff and kind of like what's happening and stuff. Uh, We're we're just kind of letting the audience know um, what our direction is. And so we in, in that video, we're going to talk about Forsyth Fantasy Hour. And in terms of that show, nothing drastic is really happening. Um, so you guys are getting the cool inside scoop with Mario Lopez. I don't know if he does that show. Insider. Is that Mario Lopez? I really don't know. But the show, Forsyth Fantasy Hour, will still be continuing throughout the year, um, every two weeks. So we are still sticking to that schedule. And like, really, nothing's changing a whole lot but the video is worth checking out anyway so yes that the 2018 update video should be going live at the end of the week i say end of the week as in this is currently january 2nd so it should be going up around the 4th or 5th maybe the 6th i don't know Um, But if you're listening to the show in the future, then the video is already up and you can watch that and you can already watch the new stuff that we're doing because managing and scheduling time on the internet is weird am i right what's the deal with internet time okay sorry that was a really bad joke (laughs) anyway um the next episode of foresight fantasy hour is going to release 
on January 16th, 2018. That's all for the ad break um, where I self-plug what we're doing because we don't have any ads. But hopefully, here's the 2018 that we're going to get some ads. And you hear the sounds of each of the doors uh, automatically shutting down um, around the entire entirety of the room, except the office, because it has a normal uh, non-vorpal door. Like, like this. Um, gotcha. But you just hear one after another, these doors shutting down, and um, everything goes dark for a little bit. But then the light coming from the the channels of the, the green energy... Um, kind of illuminate the room and Matic is petrified and he pulls off one of the patches and it comes out as a uh, hooded lantern uh-huh. um, that's lit and he goes oh no oh no 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 and he runs over to the automatons who have all shut down um, and their mm-hmm. uh, their eyes have gone dark and he runs over and he he looks at one of them and he's like, oh, no, no, come on, come on, please, baby, come back on, come back on, come back on. He goes, yes. And when he says that, uh, the automaton looks up. You see its eyes and they're yellow. And they look at Matic and they flip on red. And they grab him by the throat and they throw him towards you guys through the office window. Whoa. Uh, I dodge. Yeah. I don't know yeah. about you. Well, yeah, yeah, we, we move out the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah, both of you dexterity saving throws. Okay, let's cool. do that. Oh boy, twenty. <laughs> it's a natural, natural twenty. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you got twelve. Uh, and what's my thing? The I saving did. throw. No, he said dexterity. Saving throw. Yes. Which That's, is it's under your proficiency. A saving throw means when something dangerous is happening. Thirteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, the two of you duck out of the way. Um, with a twenty, is there anything you would like to do, Tristan, with this? Um, well, I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not sure what I'm grabbing, but you know, we're, I'm, do- I'm dodging like Matic getting thrown. Mm-hmm. I'm dodging Matic the projectile. Yeah, but I, as, as he's coming by, I maybe try to grab for just any patches that are on him. just to just to <laughs> sure. just to snatch myself an item it could be that 12 foot robo he was talking That's about so jack yeah. yeah he's always stealing something yeah just just kind of just kind of hands you out can't help um, yourself yeah. okay so Does i need you to roll um steal die yeah. steal yeah doesn't matter I, I need to roll 2d10 okay cool and okay so i just roll them at the same time okay or like actually 2d right yes okay can i borrow yours then yeah Thanks. So I was confused earlier, just an aside. It, I'm making a roll once. for a hundred number, but like... Right. <coughs> okay, so I got 30 on one and 70 on the other. Okay, so it's 37. Okay. This time. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's good. Okay, that's awesome. So you grab one of the patches... <laughs> and as he goes over you, you grab one of the patches through the broken, like wall slash window because it's all glass um a wooden ladder just comes out of your hand and just <laughs> extends out um and actually it just kind of like knocks over one of the automatons uh because it's 24 feet long oh, <laughs> and geez. it's just now just protruding from the <laughs> office and Matic flies and um slams against the wall um i rolled a death saving throw for him Mm-hmm. Uh, to see and to actually give the chance because you know, fun of D and D is giving chance right. of whether he would die or not. Mm-hmm. Um, he failed two of his three saving throws, but on the last one he got a twenty. Okay, which means um uh, he his health goes automatically back to one. So he's laying there against the wall in the but back of the alive. office, and he's just coughing. And um, he basically had like a lot of the wind knocked out of him, and probably a couple broken ribs, and he's cut up all of class. Well, sure, because but he is still he is actually he, still alive and conscious. But at a one, yeah. So okay. he's still conscious. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's just kind of lying there, riling in pain, and then the two of you are sitting in the office. I'm like holding on to this ladder. Yeah, there's yeah. just a ladder that you're holding on to that, that is like way poking out. 
Do you think he notices? <laughs> I don't think can he cares. You, and, and can you take that thing? And how do you shove it back in your coat? I don't know. He didn't explain. He how to did make explain a patch. the I patch think thing. It, once the patch leaves leaves the coat, it becomes the item again. So I think you did just now a twenty four four ladder. Great. Right. So there's no way I could turn it back into a patch. And I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. So great. just throw the thing down. Right. Well, actually, because I knocked down one automaton. Yeah. But how many is are it, there? Well, there's just the one that we saw get activated. Right. Also, are we rolling for initiative? Um, I would say not right now. Okay. Because all the other ones, there are 16 in the room. Mm -hmm. One of them is knocked over, but it's still like active. And all of their eyes are yellow. And the one that eyes turned red, it went back to yellow. Okay, good. And they're all just kind of moving their heads around the room. Okay. So something uh, obviously has go uh, gone terribly wrong. And you know how you said he was coughing but conscious. Yeah. So at this point, I do... Uh, am, am I wa be able yeah, to you, walk over to him? Yeah. Okay. Th I'm going to say, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This place needs to be shut down now. If those guys outside were in here now, we would be in a deep trouble while she's doing this i'm kind of swinging the ladder around so that i can maybe knock over the automatons in the room i don't want them to notice me okay or anyone else <laughs> um this Ma is what i'm manic is just laying there going <gasps> i think this may be a bad time to talk about shutting down my business and he's, he's, he's just now like he's coughing again um Okay, is he coughing up blood? Yeah. Okay, good. Because that would mean... He's at a that, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, remember, he's at a one. Because remember, this, this you know, he, he's actually probably more hurt than, than mm -hmm. he even realizes. Because... Oh, he almost died. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of Jack, um, make a... If you're holding up a ladder and moving around... I'll say, I'll say this is actually strength. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So roll for strength. Okay, cool. And wouldn't we want to... Get out. Jack's doing his thing. And Jack's doing his thing. Oh, no. Oh. I got a nine. Okay, um, you you bump the ladder into one of them. Um and as soon as you touch it, um, its eyes turn red and it's looking around to see what hit it, but it can't recognize that the ladder is Thanks. Um, oh. like, so you don't want to instigate these things, evidently, Jack. Right, but it's I I've now taken into account that it, when you it, it's a physical instigator that yeah. it turns red to. Yeah, so it's not like on sight, like death eyes. Well, now it's like watching the ladder kind of move, but it you can see it doesn't know what to do. Okay, with it's trying it's trying to it's trying to assess the threat. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Assessing threat levels, Ultron style, got you. <laughs> cool. Um, I put the ladder down because it's very heavy. As soon as you put the ladder down, the one that you bumped is just staring at it. Okay. Okay, good. Um, because it, yeah, it's not looking at you as the threat; it's looking at the ladder as the threat. Right. Yes. Okay. So I join Emmy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what would you guys like to do? Well, I mean, do we drag his sorry butt out of the cave? Do we leave him in there? I mean, uh, I feel like we still have to take down the well forge. But how I'm going to make chance. I'm going to have you. And, and all these doors have now been shut. And as you realize that, you realize the way out is shut as well. So you are actually trapped in the in this building. Wow. Gotcha. And here I thought my biggest threat was going to be the floating head, which has now evidently been taken out. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, from what I remember him telling us, these guys have codes to get through these mm -hmm. doors. And we don't know the codes. Well, he should have one. So, I rifle through his... his <laughs> As his you start body. doing that, he starts slapping your hands and he's just like, are you looking for the code? I'll just, I'll just give you the code. Okay, yeah. <coughs> uh, hey, 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 chill out, chill out. That's why I was, I was doing it for you. Come and <laughs> um, he, he hands you a little slip of paper. Thank you. Um, that is a five-letter word. That says, um, that says robot oh. on it. Robot. I'm going to assume that this maybe goes to the workshop or maybe the engine room. Um, 
Maddox says, no, no, no. Um, okay, in the case of an emergency, all of any of the codes that me and my brother brothers will have will fix, will open any door in the facility, except for the entrance and the Wellforge. We wanted to make sure if there was ever a state of threat, that those were the two things that were locked off. Now, what's, what's the problem is you need all three codes to open the, um, the engine room. Um, and then he goes, but luckily you have me, the perfect dwarf that has ever lived, and I can tell you the codes. Sure. Perfection in a pool of blood. Please tell us the codes, <laughs> yes. And as he does that, he passes out. Great. Awesome. So we got one code. Uh, yeah. We got robot. So we can we can get into a one room. of the rooms that aren't entrance or engine well room. forge or engine room. Yes. Right. You can open one of the doors in the engine en the engine room because each of the brothers have a code that will open each door. Gotcha. Which There's is three doors into the engine room. Gotcha. Yeah, which is actually okay. marked on the map. Okay. Not that the not that the audience can see that. But. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, what which of the rooms did um. Did the gnome and the other brother walk into? Um, they said they were going to the engine room. And funny enough, as you say that, and when you look, um, you see Reddick in the corner. And he's like backed up against the wall and he looks up and he goes, Oh, holy crap, you guys are alive. Um, I think I'm going to need some help over here. I, I'm going to try to get to you. Do whatever you can to make sure these things don't do what they did to him. Wait. How how do how do we know they're going to attack you? I just hit it with a ladder and it was just looking at the ladder. I feel like you should be fine. They're on security mode. Don't you know anything about automatons? No. no. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he's, he's just like shouting across the room. He goes, luckily these things don't react towards vocal sound, but they have a cone of vision. If they see anything that is going on that is organic, they will go and attack it. That's what's going on right now. They shouldn't be on in the first place. They, be sh they should be shut down like everything else. But just make sure their eyes don't go red. If they do, we're screwed. Oh, dear. Gotcha. So I'm going to try to walk over to the two of you, if that's okay. Sure. Um, I have an idea. What's that? And, I, I, and I'm, I'm discussing this to you. Okay. I know I wasn't doing too good with that ladder just now. But that ladder is just a hugely long stick. Maybe if we're both holding it... And and prying off like any of these automatons as he's walking and to us. And it's not organic. Yeah, and it's not organic. They're going to be paying attention to, to the that, ladder. and we can also push them away together, like that away will, from him. That will help with the ones that are closest. Um, the ones because he's in the far corner of the room. Mm -hmm. Um, the because there's two automatons. Um, well, there are four automatons stationed at every hole. Um, that are across from one another. Mm-hmm. So two on one side, two on the other side of the channel. Does that make sense? Yeah, Sorry, I'm, I'm speaking in Reddick's voice. Okay, I, I am... I'm trying to vocally say this for the audience as well. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So there are, there are four channels. Uh -huh. Yes. And then We're on the left and right of each channel, there are two automatons. Okay. Okay. One of them closest to the uh, the office, Maddox's office, is um, knocked over. Okay. Okay. And then we'll say the other one closest... Tomatic's office um, is still focused on the ladder. So where exactly is Reddick? Reddick is in the corner near the engine room, right? Yes. Okay. And where are we actually? Are we right? We're right outside the office. Or yeah, okay. more or less. Gotcha. Like okay. Um, because that's a long way. Yeah, that is a long way. So, what do we have on us? What What was the item you got again? From oh, those knuckle things. Yeah. Okay. So that's close range. My robe of useful items. Reddick okay. starts making his way over, mm -hmm. um, and so far he's doing well. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, because oh, remember I could fly. Oh my gosh, you can. That's a good idea. You can. Do That's that. actually a really good idea. I was gonna take out my crossbow and try like shooting them with inanimate objects. I don't know, but like that's a much better idea. So. Should we? Should I try? Can I pick anybody up when I fly? Oh uh, yes, you can. Because I am actually pretty strong. Yeah, you're oh. really strong. And you're. No, I'm not. No, no, I'm saying I, you're, you're probably not that big to where I could pick him up. Why won't? Why don't you pick the gnome up? Oh. <laughs> yeah, <that's what> <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. So do I scream to him and just say, just stay put? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he stops and he goes, okay, okay. Stop, stop, stop. Whatever you say. Whatever you say. And remember, I spent a week uh, using this darn oh, thing. Oh, nice. The training comes in. Yes. Uh, Some of us did. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So you have um, part of what you got out of the Wellforge, uh-huh. as we've explained uh, multiple times before, but we're actually using it. Yay. Um, you can gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed for 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, I will. Um, yeah. That's so that no means problem. you can fly 20 feet, 20, 25 feet up in the air. Um, and... Like that's that's as high as you can go, uh-huh. um, which is totally perfect because this is a huge factory lot. Okay. Their ceilings are super high, so yes, you can one hundred percent do this. What? Awesome! So I fly over to him. So um, now, you, do, you, you, wait, in which direction do we want to go? Since we can't get out. W- well, I mean, what did we just bring him back to me? Like bring him. I know, back but is that is that the best thing to do? Is to go back? Um, that's what that's what, so. What uh, do you want to do before okay, I will go off? Oh, before you go off. Yeah, before I go um, off, I have to ask him. So Reddick is still standing there, mm-hmm. and he goes, okay, um, um, let me think. He goes, yeah, yeah, bring me, bring me to you guys. I've been wanting to get to you. That's what I've been saying. Okay. So you, just come pick me up. Here we go. So then I do. So you, you tap on your chest, and, um, you get this, uh, white glowing, um, a yellowish golden light come out of you, and these wings, um, fly out from from your back and you go up in the air um and you look very angelic whoa take a picture take a picture and <laughs> i take out my iphone x yeah 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 <laughs> kodak moment <laughs> um and you go over and you Reddick just lifts up his hands and you pick him up by the hands and you fly over um and you are back to the office okay uh with reddit completely safe hmm. cool which only took like two minutes. Awesome. Talk about solving that issue. Yeah. Hey. Really good job. <laughs> you, so, yeah. Okay. So, you can do this once per long rest. So, you probably won't be able to do this again. But, <laughs> hey, that yeah. worked pretty well. That worked right then. Um, Still matter. <laughs> One domino at a time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Reddick's looking at you and he's like, okay, wow, that's freaking amazing. You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. Hey, it's a Wellforge item. You're in a good business, I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you think so. Um, you think. We look around. However, <laughs> I kind of have an issue with the security system. Yeah, um, I see that. Walking off the door is kind of an idiotic thing to do. Yes. Okay. Um. So w- where were you guys when this whole thing happened? In the office. You you were just here. We were inside the office, yeah. Okay, so me and um and Lawrence, the, the, the kid, um, were, we were checking the engine room like right before everything shut down and he said um the uh like he said he was gonna fix the the power outage because he said it was something simple so he just went in i was waiting in the hallway for him when he came out um we were, we were gonna go to storage because that was the next place we were gonna go because i figured hey, max i want to talk to two of you guys um that's that's when everything shut down and uh he was really freaked out about it and yeah where is lawrence um I don't know. I think he's still um, in locked off by one of the engine room doors. Oh, because I, I know there's three. And so, and where's Gordy and Big Brutus? Because we kind of need all wait, these codes. Gordy, who's, who's Gordy? Gordy. Well, I was talking about. Wait, is Lawrence not his name? Because I was talking about the 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 youngest brother. I thought his name was Gordy. He told me it was Lawrence. No. Wait, what? Yeah, he told me it was Lawrence. No. No, no, no. Okay, that's weird. Buddy, are you being played? Yes. Uh, it kind of looks like it. Uh-huh. Because the biggest, oldest brother... Hey, wait, wait, wait. Is he still Is he still conscious? And he points at Medic. No. And actually, honestly, no. actually, we should keep him that way. Yeah. yeah. Next time he wakes up, we can just crack him over the head. Look, well, I'm we... going to be up front with you, like I have been with everybody today. today. <laughs> <laughs> this is like truth serum day. <laughs> <laughs> I... I... I, I feel like we should tell him what what what's going on for yeah because it it seems like it well, seems like he's also getting the short shrift from his employers and he could either he he can help us uh, you might want to join us in helping us um or slash die because that's a really big possibility here today well, uh, that's something I would like to avoid okay so. well here we go <clears throat> yeah and look I'm I I feel like you could be using your services in something a little bit more positive than this. This, yeah. Look, these guys are obviously messing with a natural resource. That they can't handle. I mean, yeah, they can handle. There were multiple power surges in what? The span of half an hour? And 
you know, honestly, what I think is happening, uh, my, my, my dad used to be, he used to like Wellforge. That's part of the reason why um, working for this business interests me, because uh, that was something my, my dad, the stories he always told me about. But he would say when there is more Wellforges active, the stronger the each one got. Uh oh. So you were saying that one was already active. So that's what's that's what's causing the power surges here. It's because it's just getting the energy from another one. And yeah, and there's like three. Okay, so that's probably why we're sitting here in the dark. Oh. Okay. Well, good to have you on the team. Glad to be here. Let's get these codes, guys. 